Hello, everybody. I want to begin our devotion time with the book A.W. Tozer's The Pursuit of God. For those of you who don't know him, he was a minister of the gospel within the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church. He served in the Midwestern states from the early to the mid-1900s. And he begins, his, he begins his book in the preface with this timely statement. In this hour of all but universal darkness, cheering gleam appears. Within the fold of conservative Christianity, there are to be found increasing numbers of persons who, whose religious lives are marked by a growing hunger after God himself. Tozer is noting that in his day, which he considered spiritually dark, by the way, there were those who were seeking God with their whole heart. It seems to me that in every season of crisis, those who profess the name of Christ turn more completely to him for strength, help, and guidance. This is a good thing, don't you think? To Tozer says that these folks were not distracted by fancy words or, or great performances within the Sunday uh, worship service. They weren't even distracted by teaching about God. Tozer describes these folks as people who want to drink from the fountain of living water, God himself. But in a stinging indictment of the evangelical churches of America, he claims that Christians who are searching for God in this way were few and far between. In a colorful word picture, he says the church has carefully rebuilt the altar, gathered the sacrificial bull, slaughtered it and placed its pieces on the altar, but they have never a care that there is not a sign of fire on lofty Mount Carmel. This is a reference to the Old Testament story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal found in 1 Kings chapter 18. You see, Elijah won the victory that day. Why? Because he believed in the power of God and he pursued him completely. Tozer is saying that the church in 1948 had a form of godliness but denied its power. And he lays the blame squarely on the men and the women in the pulpit, by the way. He quotes John Wesley, and I'm going to paraphrase him because he uses Old English, but he says, Wesley says, What good is correct doctrine without correct temperament? A heart turned towards God. To many of us, God is merely a, a, a grandfather figure, somebody who gives us what we want, or he's a deity far out there someplace who, who doesn't care about us. We, we, we don't realize that he's a personal, everywhere present, all-knowing, and all-powerful God. We do not comprehend his holiness. Now, I don't mean to condemn all ministers of the gospel, for I am one, but I will say that in general, we have not proclaimed the whole gospel. And I plead guilty as charged. You know, I, I know I don't pursue God with my whole heart. I struggle with that. Do you? If we take even a casual look at the words of Jesus, we see that he emphatically calls us to repent of our sins and seek after God. What's the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. He told us that if we were to be his disciple, we must die to ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Have you ever considered what he meant by saying, die to yourself? I have had more time to reflect on my relationship with the Lord over the past couple of months, as I hope you have too. And I know that I do not know God as I am known by Him. While I repent of that most days, often I find my state in a state of worldliness where I'm pursuing after the things I have to do, work and relationships, and, and I get distracted by all of that and I forget my relationship with my Creator. Now, don't get me wrong, the ministry I serve in is important, as I'm sure whatever you are doing in life is important as well. But are these things more important than our relationship with the Creator? Certainly not. It's that understanding, by the way, that caused me to pick up Tozer's book. You know, it's been sitting on my shelf for a number of years. I knew that if I ever picked it up and read it, I'd be convicted and challenged by it. But I need to put into practice what I preach. I need to do better at that. You see, this world is temporary, folks. I've said this before. It is only preparation for our eternal relationship with God. And I don't know about you, but I want to be found ready and worthy of Him on that day. Now, if you feel this way, I would guess that most of you do, by the way. 
And if you're honest with yourself, maybe we ought to join this journey together. Maybe we ought to learn what it means to pursue God with our whole heart. Thank you for joining me today, and I look to see you next week as we continue with chapter one of his book. So grab it, catch up with us, and ride along.